Yeah, I, I, I saw something too. We're you, recording. You're starting recording. We're recording now, right? right? We've we've had some Got strange it. things about recording here going on. I'm not really sure what happened here. Hello, everyone. This is Luca Mino here. I'm back with Frank Gregory Ford. This is another edition of Global News Update on TLB TV, brought to you by the Liberty Beacon Project, where we give you complete backstage and up-to-date info as to the developments occurring in our world today. Good afternoon, Greg. You're you're coming from a smoky, uh, hazy neighborhood in uh, in California. What's going on? Okay. Well, we've got. Oh, in a matter of a few hours, we have 20 fires that have consumed almost 100,000 acres out here. And they, I believe it was brought on by the two, two days of winds that we're having. And we have now, we have winds from Napa, Sonoma, and Mendocino counties, which are the very famous wine counties, of course, in California. And I live right in the middle of those. And and they, they, the line of flames extends all the way down to Southern California. So uh, all, virtually all the schools in these affected areas were shut down. They, they've, they have several hundred miss, missing people now that can't be accounted for. They have 2,000 homes that have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, in the little town of Santa Rosa, yeah. uh, 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 they're right now evacuating two large hospitals that are being threatened by flames. So it's really quite an issue. Donald Trump, okay, our, our hot under the collar president, right. has actually declared uh, an emergency, national emergency, okay, and, or statewide emergency in this case. Well, all right. We'll be praying for you on that side. Let me, um, okay, well. let me get things going with Snapshot, if you'd like, and, and we'll jump back to you in, in, in a second. All right. Well, you better believe it. Be, let's do it before it gets too smoky here. Yes. And what I'd love to do is bring you in via sharing screens like, we, like I've learned to do. Uh, right. As we speak, a neighborhood in Santa Rosa, California, look, look, at, the, look at the houses. Look at the, the foundations, if you will. They're really uh, broken up Absolutely. and just flattened. Right. All right, that, that's part of the 2,000 homes that have been, you know, wiped out. Yeah. And, you know, and to show you how serious this is, our president is sending out Mike Pence to deal with this. Right. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to switch subjects because I know we love talking about this. 9-11. I found this today, and I had to share it. Never remember. Courtesy of Xanax. Why? Because we are a dumbed-down society. This is what we do best. We listen to government. We take our pills. We go take drinks. We go beat our, our spouses. Uh, this is what we do. So they're counting on us never remembering. But uh, this is just to let them know that, you know, we're, we're on their trail, and we know what they're thinking, and we know what, what they're doing, and we're not complying. Um, as Greg likes to talk about Prescott, in the criminal Bush enterprise, I thought this was pretty good. Claim everything, explain nothing, deny everything. And I'm sure we'll, we'll get back to that. Greg sits there, writes notes. You know, it, whenever I'm, I look like I'm not really listening and I have my head down this way, I'm writing notes because of what Greg is saying. That, that's, that's how good, that this is how much I love this show. Very, very important. When you're talking about... Um, Anything at all, be it monopoly over water, be it big pharma, be it Monsanto, be it now having the gigantic chemical giants, uh, Dow Chemical, et cetera, with Bayer, with Monsanto. They're all, this is why right here. This is a, a good example of it. If, uh, if people stop getting cancer, we stop making profits. So we need to make sure everybody focuses on the cure and not the cause. This is a deliberate way of doing business, okay? This is a marketing tool. Um, on the slightly romantic side and on the uh, yin and yang, or the male and female, uh, this is important because people think that crying is not manly and crying is not a man thing. Well, you're wrong. There's a sacredness in tears, and that goes back 10,000 years on this continent. It's not a mark of weakness, but a mark of strength. It's a mark of power. 
uh, integrity, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they, they speak more eloquently than 10,000 tongues. They are the messengers of overwhelming grief, of deep contrition, and of unspeakable love. Especially for, for a man, and I thought that, that, was, that was really cool. I wanted to throw that in. Uh, and for those who believe in Thanksgiving and who believe in Cristofo Colombo, which is, that wasn't even his name, um, this, this is what uh, the Tainos were greeted with. And I believe in, 50, in less than 50 years, he decimated over 97 population, 90%, I'm sorry, 97% of the population. I can't even speak properly when I think of stuff like this. This is what they did. This is how civil they were. So you're asking who, who the savages were, right? Have a good look. And don't believe us, like we always say, do your history. Thank you, Greg, for this snapshot. And I'm going to stop sharing and come back to you so we can, we can keep going because we're, we're sending prayers out for you in, in California today. And we hope everything's going well. Well, thank you so much. Uh, by, the, by the way, I'm still hot under the collar, even without the wildfires that are burning. Yeah. I, I put in a request to find out exactly what the munitions were used in the Las Vegas shooting, mass right. shooting, uh, that all the shooters used. Okay. That wasn't a slip of the tongue or a Freudian slip. Okay. All the shooters used. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for one, I'd like to find out just, you know, I can tell a lot by the munitions, you know, who was behind the shooting, all right? And secondly, I can tell by the effectiveness, you know, of the, of the rounds and the munitions, mm -hmm. what was supposed to happen, what happened and what was supposed to happen. Given the range, you know, the velocity of the rounds, the penetration of the rounds, the type of material of the rounds, I can tell an awful lot, okay? Yeah. You know, being in the business of, of shooting people for 30 years, uh, I can say and speak with a little authority, okay, on that. And, and, I, and I don't, you know, I'd like to say at that point, I'm suspicious, absolutely. And if there's anybody that thinks I'm not, okay, and doesn't believe me that I can't back it up with facts, better think again or listen to somebody else. Because, sorry, we're dealing with uh, the, the beginning of Gladio C right now, which is going to be a terrorist strike. Okay, going on for a long time. This is the opening chapter of Gladio C, all right? Does this thing have any kind of familiarity, a familiar ring to it? I mean, what was it? The president of MGM uh, sold all his stock in Mandalay, the Mandalay Hotel just a few days before. Gosh, where have we heard that, Luca? 9-11, maybe? Uh, you know, where the, where the uh, directors of the CIA all sell, their, all sell their stock, or have they put their stock, excuse me. Well, to be technically correct here. Um, and, as in Buzz Krongard, all right, making billions of dollars off of the 9-11 disaster. And, oh, what a thorough investigation that was. Oh, oh I've never seen so much hand-wringing and weak sistering in my whole life. Exactly. And on top of the, the fact that the government tells the Supreme Court what to do, one can imagine what, you know, what's going on and stuff that will never be investigated. Let me just throw you something real quick, Greg, because I just, we're just talking about this and I have to share screens again in order to, hey, I'm getting good at this, um, in order to share this with the public. Look at this. The Supreme Court turned a backwards, racist, papal bull into American law. It's preventing this country from confronting a genocide. Isn't that exactly what they're doing with you, Greg? By refusing your case, they, they don't, you know, no, no. They're, they're just like a horse with, with the blinders on, right? They don't have to look at it. The See 15, no evil, speak the no evil, hear no evil. That's their motto. Okay. The, the 15th century it, it, doctrine that, that let Columbus discover America is now the basis of Indian policy. See, so 200 years, 300 years later, we're next. They apply something to us exactly in the same way because we are sheep. We are slaves, just like they were. So that's the one thing well, I, I had to share with you. You know, years ago, I was out in the Car Caribbean, Caribbean, mm -hmm. and uh, 
I had to go pick somebody up on a med- medevac to a, a little island called San Salvador. Yes. And and if anybody knows where, not El Salvador, but San Salvador, in the it's in the Bahamas. And I got to go out to a large white cross, and that is where Chris Christoph Cologne, that was his real name, by the way, mm-hmm. Christoph Cologne landed in the New World. Okay. He was looking for Indians. Okay. I guess they had a little problem with their navigation back then. Right. As in flat worlds and so forth. Yeah. But he, he thought he was landing in India. Okay. Hey, they had dark hair. They had brown skin. Okay. So when he found out, no, he wasn't, he decided that to go ahead and claim uh, the Bahamas basically for Spain. But one of the things that he did was within a few hours when the Indians couldn't tell him where the little gold trinkets were that they had on, mm-hmm. on that spot where the cr- cross is now, he cut, he severed the right hand of all the men on the island with swords. Okay. Gee, I mean, are we talking serious public relations here? Are we talking serious anthropological exchange going on? Okay. Uh, I'd like to fill something in, Greg, because this is interesting. Um, I'm working with, with other, um, other professionals in the field that, that say that in, in 1492 that um, Columbus or the Queen, they already had their, they already had their in, import-export triangle going on between Europe, going to Africa, picking up the slaves, going over to America, dropping slaves off, picking up the Indians, going to Europe. That, that was part of an already, already, uh, already instituted triangle of export-import. So, yeah, we'll call, it, we'll call it the love triangle right. between, between Portugal, Spain, and the, the, and the Arab states in Africa. So okay. there, there were some people that said he wasn't lost at all. And there's another Indian legend going around that, that you, know, he, you know, he thought uh, that, you know, the, the word Indian doesn't come from uh, the land that he thought he landed on. In, Indian... Uh, rightly so comes from the fact that he called the new people that he just discovered, they were indios, una gente indios, uh, people in God, uh, hardly mm. dressed and very easy to, to uh, enslave. And put down mines, the silver mines that were on their way to being, yes. being produced. That's what yeah. happened to the uh, Kerouacs and what, 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 uh, the, what, what was the other one? The Caribs? Kerouacs yeah. and the Caribs, they just okay. disappeared almost overnight down into those mines, the silver mines, mm-hmm. the famous silver mines of Cologne, Panama. Okay. There's a beautiful okay. story. So, Greg, there's a beautiful story if, while we're still on the Native Americans. The Siwi. Nobody ever heard of the Siwi before, I'll bet. From uh, around Charleston, North Carolina, there's a beautiful story about the Siwi, how the, the Grand Chiefs could figure that the, the European boats went to a center point in the horizon, and if we just went out to that center point, that we could deal with the Europeans directly without the British or the Europeans. And they tried that, and they didn't know how, how far they, they, they were going. They hit a huge storm, and overnight, almost immediately, almost the entire tribe disappeared into a huge storm because they had brought all their, their best... Uh, items to trade and all their strongest warriors and leaving all the sick and the young and the grandchildren and, and the, uh, the elderly behind. So Did almost it. in one instant, they were wiped out. It's things like that that people don't know. And there were 500 different tribes doing 500 different cultures. So it was, mm-hmm. this is what we're, well, we're here for, to, to honor now, them. One of the things, as we've mentioned previously, you know, the, the genocide, okay, the Holocaust, uh, all right, as some people are fond of saying, mm-hmm. okay, the Holocaust of, of the Aboriginals and the Native Americans, okay, goes something like this. Several million were wiped out just by sheer contact, all right? 100 there were million. Just, there were, uh, John C. Fremont in California, John C. Fremont basically considered one of the first Republicans. His business was death squads for Indians and trading to the Spanish. There you go. But that's what happened to California Indians. 
okay? So we will mention Canadian Indians, which is, it, which is a monstrosity into itself. Thank you. Australian Indians, uh, South African Indians, yes, we won't even mention those. By the way, I have something for everyone to listen to, all right? And I want everybody to go jump online right now and pull this up. <laughs> May 31st, May 31st, very serious business here. May 31st, 1936, the front page of the New York Times. What are, what are you going to see? Okay. Remember, 1936, we were still, what, three years just out of the uh, Depression, and we still hadn't recovered yet. Uh, there was a massive purge going on. 1936 was the worst purge in, in all of history going on in Russia. Okay. And let's face it. Who were most of the Bolsheviks? They were Jewish. Okay. They were behind, they and Stalin were behind one of the most massive pogroms and purges in U.S. history. In all history. Forget U.S. history, in all history. Okay. But millions were being slaughtered, reads the headlines, in Europe of, of, of Jews, all over Europe. Well, funny thing was the war didn't start, okay? World War II started in 1941, and, and there was no inhabitation of FEMA camps. Oh, I mean concentration camps. I'm sorry. Right. FEMA camps. There I go again, okay, in Germany or Poland, for that matter, okay, with yeah, – and it wasn't just Jews, folks. It was gypsies. It was anybody mentally infirm anybody that they took a shine to yeah. okay the nazis took a shine to and who was one of the leading nazis mr bush got it mr bush mm -hmm. who helped the nazis you oh, know yeah. actually create the situation mr bush because he sold the cyclone b to those death camps mm. those concentration camps at auschwitz cyclone b gosh mm. Okay, we, we're seeing another picture here, I think. Who helped with the database to identify all the Jews, okay, in Europe? Guess right. who, Mr. IBM, International Business Machines, okay? We, I, think, I think we need to take a long, hard look at it, several issues. Forget Kennedy. Everybody knows who killed Kennedy, okay? We need to take a look at World War II, Okay, the concentration camps, which didn't start accepting anybody into them until 1943. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Over Europe, 44. Right. Okay, all right. And I want to see who started doing the ordering, okay? Who was issuing the orders to uh, you know, basically round up all these Jews, right. okay? And anybody else, for that matter, and put them into those those camps i want to know okay see because greg, greg isn't this isn't this called uh having open discussion on on, on the, the holocaust isn't this called uh questioning the holocaust like questioning 9 11 is illegal well questioning the holocaust was uh, is uh, against the law in only those countries directly involved in the holocaust itself Usually, when you tell the truth, you don't have to hide anything, so it's always wide open. What are they trying to hide? See, this is what Aminajad was trying to say. That in, in well, I, and here's something that I find interesting. Remember, you know, our government said I was crazy when I, when you know I was mad as a hatter, crazier than a shit house rat in August is the way they put it. When I said we can't be torturing people at Abu Ghraib prison, mm -hmm. we're not torturing anybody. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I see a lot of the similarities and parables going right. on with the same situation here, all right? And what, what I have, what I see going on right now is that somebody ordered, okay, that whole structure to happen. We, right. we have something called copper green right now. I beg everybody, look up copper green, okay? It, it smells, it smacks mm. of, of good old Nazi structure. And who was a Nazi? Who was our favorite Nazi family? The mm. Bush family. Well, the Bush family. There's folks. also another family, Greg. 
There's also another family too. What about Ford? Ford got the German cross for helping him out with all the trucks and the engines and, and all, all the, all the equipment Ford. Okay. Yep. Hang on a second. Right. Ford. Right. Where mm. have you heard that name before? Right. Okay. Well, Hey, by the way, there is something to that. I was, I was in the Russian forest one day when I was there working, I was out in the Russian forest and what do I find an old Ford model T a truck, old Ford model T truck. So yes, that is true. But in the meantime, who were the bankers after at Nuremberg? The, who did the bankers want to kill first? Who did they want to hang first mm. from the Nazis? Okay, I'll tell you what, they didn't want to hang any of the monsters from the concentration camps, okay? Because, you know, let's face it, the monsters were doing somebody's bidding, all right? They were getting rid of somebody, like the 75% of the, of the Jews that were moneyed, middle class, or wealthier in mm -hmm. Europe. They wanted that those lands seized. Somebody wanted that property seized of the Jews. So who would that be? Okay, who who would who would the bankers want murdered first? You know, in at Nuremberg, they wanted the banker, their banker of the Nazi Nazi regime, Schaefer, last name Schaefer. Mm -hmm. They wanted him hung first. I mean, there was hardly even a trial when it came to Schaefer, all right? They hung his ass, okay, uh, to shut him up. up. Kind of like, who does that sound like really familiar, you know, in the, in the near past? As in Saddam Hussein. Now, what did Saddam Hussein have in common with, you know, with America? The Bush family, the CIA. He worked for both, okay? And they hung his ass, okay? And who... and who were the Germans working with? Okay, as in IG Farben, as in Rhineland Westphalia Electric, they were working with the Americans and the Bush family. Okay, yep. God, do I, you know, I'm sorry, I'm a simple man of simple tastes, you know, I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, but hey, you know, how many times do I have to say this to our listeners? Guess who is responsible for all of this? And guess who's responsible for the Las Vegas shooting? Okay, one guess. Okay, people, start looking it up. And I want everyone to look up what happened May 31st, 1936, on the front page of the New York Times. You want to hear something hysterical? Yesterday I saw it. Yesterday I read it, made notes, took photos, got copies. I went back today. Uh-oh, somebody found it besides me. Mm -hmm. And it's gone. That information is gone now. Okay. Okay. Well, there, there, there's uh, at least the eighteen, the end of the eighteen hundreds, that can be traced back to the the uh, the term six million because they really liked that term. They used it in the in the uh, newspaper a hell of a lot. Also, something I, I want to touch on that this this show because I did promise that we would go over it on the on the uh, the next show, which is this show here, is the just war theory. And very quickly, this is how it goes. I, I might not have the dates properly, but I'll have it by the time I have the inserts for the pictures. Uh, the, the, uh, the church was having a hard time because the first commandment from God is thou shalt not kill, right? So you can't send people to war. You know, you can't be at war and in the church at the same time. No, no, you cannot kill. So St. Augustine comes up with a really cute thing called the just war theory, which says, well, Geez, okay, I can kill for my own God. I can kill for God and country. Sounds even better. And so they came, this up, they came up with this saying that you can still be Christian and you can still fight and you can still kill other people. That's how this whole thing started. It sounds very simple, but uh, they had a, a rock to move to get around that one. Um, so that was... Well, here's one, here's one near and dear to my heart, okay? Personally, everyone knows my story. The courts know my story. Personally, if you're a good God-fearing Christian, okay, we had a general in Iraq saying, you know, that killing, you know, killing Muslims was God's work. Okay, oh, please. All right. So, so here, how about if we torture, maim, dismember, murder uh, hideously, uh, you know, our our fellow man? Okay. Mm -hmm in the name of corporate profits. 
which is what we were doing in Iraq. We we're doing it in Afghanistan. We we're doing it in Africa. We we're doing it in Yemen. This is, Saudi Arabia. Isn't that, is, is, isn't that what they did in Las, in, uh, Las Vegas? Syria. Oh, yes. Right. Same mm -hmm. thing. Have you, yeah, boy. Now, I want to know on that one, profiling. I've never seen so Amer many American eagles on T-shirts in my whole life, you know, uh, as I saw there, you know. So, but, but how about it? Uh, does that justify, does Christianity justify George W. Bush ordering myself and my compatriots to torture people? Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that justify that? All right. Does that justify setting up Copper Green, a global uh, prisoner, a concentration camp system? Mm -hmm. They call it, they call it, what is it? Black ops, a black ops operation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, does that justify that? I don't think so. I've never heard the Pope say anything about it or anybody else say anything about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm, I'm just curious. I, I just, I don't know. You know, like I said, I'm just a struggling guy, you know, that, that is delusional according to the government. Okay. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So anyway, by all means, folks, look it up. Okay. Yes. I want and don't believe us, but Greg, we, we just ran out of time. I got, I, I got, I have to work for, for a time when I'm not interrupting you when you're right between two phrases, I can get right in there and just, okay. Oh, we're out of time. I'm so sorry. So I'll give you the last word, Greg, real quick. Oh, no, no. Hey, yeah, now it's time for a finish up on your snapshot. I think everybody understands what I'm saying. You know, Las Vegas is uh, the mark beginning of a terrible chapter in U.S. history. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's the CIA and the security systems and big bank money that are behind it. Op Gladio A, Europe. Radio B, Middle East, Radio C, North American continent. All right? That, that, that's all I have to say. You heard it here first, folks. Okay? So there it is. And, Greg, I think it's really important that we do uh, find out what's going on from the horse's mouth and that we, we do give our, our listeners as much uh, truth-oriented material as we can. And we just want to let you know that our hearts and our minds are with you. We're going to send a prayer out for the smoke-filled people in California. And there's also uh, good friends of mine on social media, uh, Leonard, Billy, slash Riley, uh, that we're praying for as well and his family. So um, mm -hmm. they might not ever be able to go back to w what they had before. So, Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they check and they find out that – the state of California has hired Marvin Bush to provide Homeland Security in California. All right. He was the same expert on security that was in charge of the World Trade Center 9 11 security, Marvin oh, Bush. Don't get him okay. going. Don't get him going. We have to go. So we'll, okay. we'll, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks so Very much. Best. All right, buddy. <laughs> Bye. To our listeners.